Hey everybody, this is Norman. And Debbie. We're here at the end of week two of the legislative session. Things are starting to pick up, a lot of ideas floating around, uh, but I want to start off with a reminder of our day at the Capitol coming up next week, the 23rd, that's a Tuesday. We have a bus from Rapid City, bus from Sioux Falls, where you can drive on your own, come meet your legislators, have lunch in the rotunda, and the afternoon keynote presentation will be Leslie Unruh with the Life Defense Fund, explaining how we can really achieve grassroots victory when we stand up. The video today of the update of session, we want to mostly focus on education issues, a few bills, a few ideas, and then some commentary as well. So well, let's do, let's start with homeschool day. Yeah, yesterday was homeschool day at the Capitol and despite some really bad weather for some folks, we had over 300 homeschoolers show up and it was amazing. We filled the rotunda, we overflowed with our picture on the, on the stairs and we just had tons of people come through our lunch line. So it was a really good day and we had speaker Kevin Bowden from the Homeschool Legal Defense who got to visit with a lot of legislators and great, gave a great message for the families. Next, also on the education topic, we're going to talk about the education choice concept. So this is the idea that whether it's an, a savings account or a voucher bill or a tax credit, there's multiple different models, but basically the idea would be that the parent can decide where the best school for their kid is and the state will support you in that decision. You know, the best model is probably rather than a tax credit, you know, you get a certain amount of money if you do a certain thing. What if the state just said, oh, you're choosing this other path and we don't have to pay for the education of your kid? Cool, you can keep a bunch of money on your taxes now. You don't, have, you don't owe us as much. That'd probably be the simplest route. Still looking at a lot of different options, a lot of logistics. That bill might still come this year. A lot of people are still interested, but we wanna make sure we have a good product if we actually introduce something. Yeah, and so when we're thinking about um, education, right now in South Dakota, we have three distinct and separate lanes. We have the public schools, the private schools, and the alternative instruction or the home schools. And so when we're talking about these bills, the homeschool families want to make sure that their lane is preserved. And so if, if, a, if a homeschool family chooses to accept the money, that's fine, but they, be, they would step into a different lane. Right. And we just wanna make sure that homeschool lane with no strings attached is always there, you know, just, just for safeguard, right? Yeah. Um, because we've seen in some places like a Canada, for instance, where they start with a simple voucher system and then a lot of strings become attached and pretty soon there is no other lane. Right. Um, so that's, that's one of the concerns of the homeschoolers. Um, they don't want to oppose this bill. They just want to have their own lane. Right. So what would probably happen, best case scenario, would be that the homeschoolers are neutral, they're fine with it, they aren't at risk. Yeah. Because what would be happening is, again, you've got those three lanes, there's public, private, alternative instruction. Alternative instruction would stay as it is, and then if a family who's homeschooling, if this bill goes through and they said, hey, you know what, it's worth it for the tax credit or for the dollar amount, and we realize there might be strings someday, but we're willing to take that risk, mm -hmm. then they would be technically stepping out of the homeschool lane into this other legal classification. But if the family made that decision that the, the risk was worth the reward, that'd be on them. So I wanna highlight some committee testimony we heard this week from Secretary Graves. So there was a bill in front of a committee dealing with the question of, when it comes to education standards, basically do we want more insider perspectives or more outside fresh ideas was essentially the discussion at hand. So in his testimony against this certain bill, I wanna read a section of it because it really outlines some of the conflicts and questions, but also brings a lot of clarity to what we're seeing in the education space right now. So this is from Secretary Graves. He says, let's take a look at the relationship right now between the public and parents on one side and the educators slash school boards on the other. Every time I think we've reached a low point, somebody starts digging. Parents were upset about COVID restrictions during the pandemic, and many became distrustful of educational leadership. Many still are. Today, many parents are concerned about the historical revisionism in textbooks and age-inappropriate content in library books. They're concerned about their children being indoctrinated in values which they are adamantly opposed. Are these concerns warranted? You can judge that for yourself, but regardless, it's hard to deny the reality that public schools have lost some of the trust they once enjoyed among parents and communities. If you need evidence for that, homeschool numbers have hurdled the 10,000 mark in South Dakota for the first time this year. Parents are voting with their children's feet. 
So how do schools earn back the trust? They do it by welcoming everyone to the table, by listening to every voice, by respecting every voice. Because again, remember they were talking about should we have more inside voices or outside voices? Because they won't do it if they keep digging. They won't earn it back by telling parents at board meetings they aren't welcome. They won't do it by seeking the intervention of federal law enforcement officials to treat parents across the country as terrorists, as the head of the National School Boards Association did. And they slash we won't do it by closing off a majority of the state board seats to educators only. Whether a fair characterization or not, it signals to parents and teachers and administrators know best and that they, the people like them, do not really have a seat at the table. This bill puts one more notch in the belt of education, treating parents as if they have no legitimate role or say in their children's education. Really interesting committee testimony that we saw, again, just highlighting some of that conflict and a potential path forward. So those are a lot of the education things we've seen this week. Uh, we're also seeing traction on some bills introduced on lewd and lascivious content, like with the drag shows we saw last year, some age verification for explicit materials. So stay tuned, there's gonna be a lot more coming up.